you to walk down the street right now, the three of you. Oh, probably forget couldn't it. Do it. No, I, I can't go shopping anymore. I have to phone my order in. And, you know, I, I had to change my name where I live. Unlisted numbers. I've had to change my number a few times now. Okay. Just, I'm loving it. <laughs> no. So, uh, what's going on? What? Hey, Cassius, pleasure to Cassius. meet you. Cassius, Cassius. That's right. Well, you can uh, say it a lot of different ways. Uh, I, I won't reject that. Cassius, I love uh, that. That's more of a Spanish way of saying it, right? Cassius. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. So you guys just rocked the house here in Edmonton at the River Creek Casino. Energy was palpable, almost a sold-out show. I guess I'll start it off with this. Being that you guys are one of the quintessential 80s rock groups, how does it feel that you can see the legacy continuing on with you and other groups uh, from your era? It's awesome, isn't it? Well, I think the, the idea is to just keep going. I mean, if, um, I mean, some people just sort of stop progressing and, and I think when you do that, you, you, you grow old really quickly. But if you stay on top of it, keep writing, keep moving, keep doing things. I'm also a DJ too. So I've, I always stay on top of music trends and this, that and the other. And I do a lot of remixes and I keep myself involved. And I think that helps me with new music and helps the band stay lively. And, and you know, like you saw out there, it's just like, you know, it's packed out there. So, and, and it's not all original fans either. So that's the best part, right? So if you stay current, you keep going and you, you keep in with, with uh, other artists that, that, you know, move you, that, that, that you like a lot, you know, and, and I, think, uh, I think it just fuels you because when you're, when you're really young and you're just getting started out, more than likely you're a fan of music rather than a musician. I mean, because that's, that's a, a question you have to ask yourself. Yeah. Am I a musician first or am I a fan first? And I think most of the big rock stars on the planet, the people who really became successful, they're fans first. They're, yeah. And the ones who are musicians first are the ones that sort of play on records and play in studios and don't really tour and never really, because I know a lot of them, and they never really got a successful band together because really they've always got a gig doing this, a gig doing that, and you know, they're doing a modest living, but it's, it, they don't want to give it up to, 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 to get it. Right. And I'd give anything up to get it, so boom. And you can tell because you're here and you know oh, yeah and it's lots of fun too <laughs> exactly it looks like it and you know when you're a real fan of the music you can tell what's good and what's not so it's going to give you a huge advantage right i'd hope so i'd hope so exactly. yeah and you mentioned being a dj you're also a nightclub owner you're the front man of this group how do you have time for all this how do you fit into your schedule um i'm also a budding chef there you go see we got to throw that in we're doing a, a, a show called beats and treats nice. coming up soon where we where i go to a different dj's places and we we, we cook and we also make beats, so it's going to be qu uh, that's going to be a fun show. You're chef in a lot of ways, then. Yeah, <laughs> cooking and uh, how do I find time? I, I think as you get a bit older and time goes really quickly, so you really have to stuff a lot in. Yeah. I I did a lot of mess messing about in my younger years, and um, now I'm in my mid younger years, and I realize that I've got to do a lot before I get into my old younger years. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And that's a good perspective to have. So, yeah, I mean, fuck, man. I think, you, you know, I used to get, I used to wonder as it, when I was really little, you know, probably about 10 or 11 or 12, why old people seem so pissed off? Mm -hmm. And you know what I think it is? Now? What's that? I think it's because if they knew now what what they should have known when they were you know younger life would have been so much better you'd have you wouldn't have taken things so personally mm -hmm. you would have got to work you'd have got your shit done and other than knowing the 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 outcome of races and stuff which i'm not talking about a time machine i'm just <laughs> so i think the smartest person in the world is someone who listens to a very very old person and learns from them and re make so you realize so when you get to the end of your life you have fewer regrets I mean, i'm going to have regrets if anybody says they wouldn't do it differently unless they're bernie sanders and they've been on the right side of history their whole freaking life yeah. uh 
yes, you would do it different. Yes, I would do it differently. I would do it considerably different. Um, I like what I was doing, but I would have made some of the bad mistakes I made, and, and I think I would have got off my ass a bit more. Wow. You know, I think I would have got to kick yourself and to to when you're down. It's so very valuable. It. <laughs> Seriously, so that's your message to the young fans, because I think people will find that valuable hearing it from you, especially. Yeah, um, don't think you got. Don't you think think you got it all going on? Even if you're really popular and you've got something happening, and then all of a sudden you think, well. I must be entitled because this happened to me and it didn't happen to somebody else and I didn't really have to work hard for this. And then all of a sudden they dick around and they say, oh, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna stop my own band and do something else. And they realize after five or six years of drudgery turns into 20 years of, oh, uh, what could have been? Trust me, that's what happens. Success is so infrequent and gifts so few people if you get a bite of it, you eat it, you chew it, you swallow it, you savor it, and you fucking make it work for you. Wow. Well, those are words to live by. I'm not going to forget this, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this about you guys' 80s sound that you started back then. You guys just nailed it so well, obviously. You're still here. You know, you're kicking ass. Do you think it's possible for new groups to nail that kind of sound now with today's uh, technology oh, and studios? Yeah, there's bands like The Editors, and, 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 and even when you hear... Um, even even when you hear the killers and stuff like that, you, you, you there's there's always they're always paying homage to that that sound and those sounds. I mean, we were like the new wave band. I mean, when I was doing, I was um, in the mid two thousands, I was remixing bands like the Editors and stuff like that, and and, and uh, it's just a myriad of bands, and 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 all the guitar bits were set, sounded like our guitar bits, and and the drums and shit were sound like our thing. That well, that's that's what we do, and now it's. You know, people are just really jamming into it again. And then, of course, when Crystal Castles did Not In Love and Robert Smith ended up singing on it, that brought everything full circle and then just went crazy after that. I mean, everywhere we went, we went pretty crazy after that. And then we, we released the new album and some of my DJ friends started uh, doing some remixes. And that really kicked it off, too, because sometimes you can't just say, hey, Platinum Blonde's new signal, let's... let's uh, release it to hit radio and then well we got Bruno Mars and 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 all and and Drake and stuff and and weekend where where are you going to fit in so you you fit in by ask you have to figure out a different way so you get a remix you get David Guetta to do a, a remix and stuff this is if you can obviously um I think you can uh, yes <laughs> but and, and then all of a sudden you get a dance floor hit and then that dance floor hit gets on the dance radio and then that dance radio makes its way to hit radio. So, so there are ways of, of cracking that log jam at the top with the only five artists and the same five songs. And, and you know, it's a scary situation where I, I guarantee, you know, a lot of the hits you're listening to are written by the same two people, one guy from Sweden and one guy from California. I'm not yeah. going to mention any names, but also it's scary when you... There's algorithms for everything. And it sounds like, to me, some of them songs, that it must be written by algorithms because I can't believe how identical almost every one of them are. Fear not, there'll always be someone out there or some people who are dead sick of it and start a new movement and, and change music. In the 70s, around 1970, I am a music historian too. Uh, <laughs> I like to think so. This is what we need on the show. In, in the 70s, disco took over everything. It was just big bands, big budget, lots of cocaine, lots of a, a, total access. Like a, excess, I should say. Not access, but you get a lot of access too. If you Both. Know what yeah. I mean. It's a bad combo. Yeah, and um, it, was, it was almost ridiculous. And it's almost the same as it is exactly right now. You know, with the the big I love hip hop, but like the big hip hop artists and the big pop artists and the golden shit and everything going on, and every song sounds identical and it seems to be like there's a formula and everybody sticks to a formula. Well, that's what they did back in '76 until this band came along and disgusted the hell out of everybody. They weren't the first ones to do it. Before that, there was magical bands like New York Dolls, the Ramones, Iggy and the Stooges, but this band in particular took it to another low 
like not a level low. And there are, there, uh, Steve is a, uh, the guitar player is a friend of mine and we've written songs together and mm -hmm. hung out a bit in California. Um, but the Sex Pistols changed. They came through, they bursted out, everybody was disgusted. And for that year and year and a half, they, they saved music. They literally saved music because all the new wave bands started coming out, the clash. And then there was dance music that came out, but more with uh, the way um, Blondie did it. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with, with like um, Hearts of Glass and all that. Right. And then, bat, then, then fame, like old rockers like Rod Stewart came out and Do You Think I'm Sexy? And all of a sudden, the 70s uh, started doing what, what, the, what the late 70s w was doing and then bang, the 80s started and everything was fresh for everybody. You didn't have to know how to play guitar. You kind of learned how to play guitar as you went. Right. You didn't, you see, hip hop today is what I call uh, the football of music. I'll explain. Um, in, in, in countries like this, in, in, where we're in Canada right now, uh, hockey is a big sport, but in order to play it, it's, it's and have your kids play it, it's 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 a it's a very very big deal. It takes lots of money. It does yeah. It takes lots of commitment, and a lot and a lot of heartbreak. But with football, the reason it's the biggest game in the whole entire planet, all you need is a ball, a pair of football boots, and you're off to the races. Maybe some shin pads. You you know you do get a few <laughs> kicks in the shins, but but seriously, I mean, for most part, especially in Brazil and places like that, all they need is the football, and that's it. So. Getting back to hip hop, what's hip hop? Well, it gives people the ability, just like back in, when punk rock came out, to express themselves without being like star musicians or incredibly gifted, because that's tough, but they still want to express themselves. Now, someone at home can download, load a beat, write their own rhymes, and be involved in this amazing uh, style of music that, I know it came out a long time ago, but it's part and parcel of what's going to help break this logjam at um, Hit Ready because as everybody else is singing about, I've got, you know, uh, you know, get your bottle of crystal, I'll see you in the VIP B room, shake your booty and all this shit. Rolex. We're in a new world right now. We're, we're like sexism is, is, not, is frowned upon. Objectifying women is, is becoming frowned upon. We, yeah. let, it's time we, we found a new way to sell music without using women's tits. And, and I think hip hop uh, can, can, can lead us there. And I think there's gonna be more, there's gonna be some really interesting electronic stuff that's gonna lead us there and some really cool bands. You know what? Sales of instruments is down. Kids ain't learning instruments anymore because they can get them, they, they can download the beats and get something going. But you know what? Hopefully that will say, you know, maybe I need to learn a, a little bit of piano. I want to do my own music. I don't behind what I'm rapping and I don't wanna use samples all the time. So boom, you're in, boom, you're right in the room again. And that's the key. You've got to be in a room and, 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 and create and make something new. So you help everybody else do it. Hey, listen, even if it's to a band like us, I don't care who it, who it is, as long as somebody does something to, to change what's going on out there. So more people can get involved. Cause really that's all there is too. I mean, you, every, anyone could have picked up a guitar in the eighties and played some of them songs, you know? They're well, well simple, and that's okay. That's, that's, that's good. I like it's it. It's not about who did it first. It's about who did it right. We're breaking the monotony with Platinum Blonde. Yeah. It's been a pleasure getting your feedback. I know you guys have a schedule. Thank you so very much. I don't worry about that. I think it's just I just need to smoke some dope before I... I, I... <laughs> well, hey, you, you've earned it, man. You just finished your show. Enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you so much.